Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Number one, two, nine. Let's stand together to sing it. Brother Bob will lead us. On that first together. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. On that third, he has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our God is beauty of the lilies Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me as he died to make men holy let us die to make men free God is marching on glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah singing let's have prayer together shall we father we thank you now for this evening thank you for another opportunity for us to gather together lord we want to thank you for our country we thank you lord for the, your protection and your blessing that has rested upon the united states of america thank you for the men and women that have bravely fought and defended uh, our country lord so we can freely gather together like we are this evening lord we love you and lord we thank you for those who not only have served, but certainly those who gave the ultimate sacrifice in defending their freedom and their country. And Father, we thank you most of all for you so loving us that you would give your only begotten son, that he would die in order to purchase our salvation. Yeah. And Lord, we want to thank you for that. And, and we realize we only love you because you first loved us. And so, Father, I pray you'll be pleased with our service tonight. You'll make it just exactly what you would like it to be and what we need it to be so meet the needs of every heart as only you can do in jesus name we pray amen, amen. all right you may be seated 463 in your hymnal 463 when the trumpet of the lord shall sound and time shall be no more when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there let's sing that first together when the trumpet of the lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder That bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of and the roll is called up 
Tonight's letters from Sarah Cato, missionary to southern Brazil. Dear pastors and friends, after two years of deputation, I am now here in Brazil, getting settled in and getting involved in the ministry. It's wonderful to be where God's called you to serve, but it's not a piece of cake. Even though I was born in Brazil and spent a good part of my life there, I still had some culture shock after being gone for two years. Basically, the first month here was spent reorienting myself and trying to get things done, like get a bank account, get a Brazilian driver's license, etc. My shock came when I thought I could just stroll into places and get things done with a snap of my fingers. Boy, was I wrong. I'd forgotten that you can't just get things done in a day here. My bank account was just now opened after almost a month of persistence and documents and paperwork. I've already spent countless hours in line after line at different places. God is still teaching me patience. It's hard to wait when all you want to do is anything but that. It then hit me that it's at these times when Satan wants you to become bitter and hard-hearted against the people whom God has called you to minister unto. We can't afford to do that because then we will become ineffective in reaching out to people with God's love, and that's what missions is all about. The church here in Tayucas Santa Catarina is going great. We have a lady and her three boys coming now to our church services, and they are such a joy to be around. My mom and I go to the public school once a week, now on Thursday, and a school for the mentally challenged kids and teens on Friday mornings. I love being able to sing songs with them, do puppets, and tell stories. I've also been giving piano lessons to kids from our church and from other Baptist churches in the area. It is a joy to be able to serve God with music and teach it to others. I've also been giving a discipleship course to a dear young lady in our church named Christiane. It is a blessing to see her heart for learning more and more about being a Christian. The devil fights our work here, but I didn't come here to let him win. Two Brazilian ladies, um, where I am trying to get my driver's license, asked me, why do you come to live here and leave the wonderful United States? I said, because I'm a missionary and I want to tell people about Jesus here. Please continue to pray for Tiochus and for me to get a car and for the ministries here. Praise God that he's in control of everything and still on his throne. For his name, Sarah Cato. Good report from Sarah and uh, good things going on there as they plant a church. Uh, she's helping her parents down there plant a church in southern Brazil. All right, everybody got a prayer guide tonight? Anybody need one? Everybody get through without getting one? Everybody got taken care of? That's great. That's wonderful. All right. And uh, we'll start in the back, but first let's uh, welcome back Terry Lynn. It's good to see Terry here tonight. And uh, Terry has a friend with her. This is Mark, if I remember right. Right? Mark, good to have you with us this evening. That's great. Good to see Miss Taylor back with us too. She's been sick, and I'm glad she's here this evening and uh, back with us. That's great and uh, wonderful. All right. Yeah, you want to go and give him the card now to fill out, and uh, Mark, we'll give you a card to fill out. You already did it? <laughs> Who did it? You got him one? Oh. <laughs> the usherette has taken care of it, huh? All right. And uh, you're all set on that then. Very good. All right. You're on top of it. Now, the prayer guide. On the back, uh, start with the coming events. Of course, are you inside down at the CRC prison tomorrow night? Are you here at the church on Friday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, the fellow's doing a great job out at London on Saturday mornings. So that's 8.30 to 10.30. And then our rally and work day, 9 a.m. sharp, okay? Uh, be here early. Be here so we can start at 9 o'clock and uh, have a rally. We'll have some prayer time. Uh, the word we got from our tent man is he'll be here, I think, did we clear that 9.30 as far as we know? Okay. 
We, uh, he said 9 o'clock. I'm asking him to come about 9.30. So we'll be here and ready to go. To, we'll be done with our meeting by 9.30 and be ready to help him get the tent set up, okay? And uh, better Saturday than tomorrow or Friday because I hear there's some big winds coming next couple days. <laughs> so uh, you don't want to put a tent up in 55-mile-an-hour winds, all right? So uh, we'll do that Saturday morning, okay? And uh, that'll be an exciting time, but be here on time now. Along with that, when you come Saturday, either park on the side or park in the very back, okay? If you park anywhere in the middle to the front of the parking lot, you're going to have to move your car to get the tent set up, okay? So uh, park in the back side or over here on this side, and uh, that'll be adequate, okay? And let's see. I think we took care of that. And uh, we still, well, then, of course, Sunday, you know, the turkey dinner. And uh, be prepared to park on either side. You can come in if you're dropping food off, dropping turkey off. Um, that isn't your husband, lady. It's the food we're having. And uh, drop them, come in and drop that off. And uh, then someone can park your car. If you don't want to take the walk, we'll have someone to park it. But if uh, not, then you go over and park either on the other side of Kirk Williams or the lot over here and uh, walk on into church. It's going to be a beautiful day on Sunday and uh, sunny and in the mid-50s. By the time we're all home at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but uh, it'll still be sunny and nice in the morning, and it'll be a great day. All right? Uh, on the inside of the bulletin, we praise the Lord for the 57 that were at the RU inside at, at the reception center last Thursday night. We had 17 men receive Christ as their Savior, and it was a great night. Then 18 were at London on uh, Saturday morning. And eight of those received certificates, and uh, they're doing a great job there, and guys really working the program. Now, 14,000 flyers given out. We had about 700 more today uh, that went out, so we're, we're, that puts us at 14,700 or so, which means we've got about 5,300 more to go in three days, okay? So that's about 1,800-something a day, uh, so we got to get after it, okay? Now, tomorrow's windy, so, but listen... Hospitals are great places. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, little uh, stores that are good places to, to put. You, it's, it's wonderful to just walk through Walmart and leave them in strategic places, okay? And uh, people pick them up. But uh, you're, there's all kinds of big, be, uh, I, I do have a couple indoor apartment complexes I can point you to where you can do, do indoor things uh, when it's real windy out like it's going to be. So uh, there's always a way. And uh, we got to find a way to get her done, all right? And there's, there's uh, Doctors Hospital and Mount Carmel West and OSU and Riverside, and there's all kinds of places here we can get them out and uh, get them put in. So uh, just uh, uh, grab some tonight, sign them out, and uh, let's, let's finish well, okay? And uh, good. So far, I think we've got somewhere around 80, 81 that have called in and made reservation and uh, said they'll be here on Sunday for the dinner, and so uh, keep it going, all right? That's a good, good job so far. Now, on the, uh, of course, can you pray for the church ministries and such? The health list, the very first name there, Ronnie Ross, I talked to Ronnie this afternoon, and uh, he'd asked special prayer for him tonight. He's been really suffering with some headaches recently, and uh, about four days worth, and uh, he also let me know he had a uh, cat scan done or something he's got an enlarged pancreas and they haven't given any results back on that yet but uh, he's concerned about that and he asked that we would especially remember him in prayer this evening so I wanted you to mention that and then if you'll add Stacy Anderson Stacy's at OSU and uh, again just uh, erratic heart issues or potassium again is not level where it needs to be so they've uh, doing much improved as of this afternoon and uh, things things are under control, but they're watching her, observing her for another day or so before they'll think about letting her come home. But uh, keep Stacy in your prayers, all right? And uh, appreciate you doing that. Okay, continue to pray for those in authority and, of course, especially our military and uh, those who are serving uh, and keep them in your prayers. And then uh, these on the cancer list who battle cancer and then uh, these for salvation. I pray that you'll continue to remember them in prayer and that the Lord will send somebody by to witness to them and then the unreached people groups and then of course our missionaries highlighted tonight uh, by Sarah Cato and then we want to pray uh, for Sunday okay pray for the flyers that have gone out pray for the advertising that's being done uh, pray for the service on Sunday pray that God will prepare people's hearts 
uh, pray for the, the preachers in the children's churches, uh, that they'll make the message clear and the children understand. Pray for, pray for your pastor, uh, that, that the Lord will help us to be a blessing and, and to be used, and, um, and that he'll stay healthy for Sunday, okay? And uh, just, just things that I know, uh, I've done this enough years, I know what Satan does, and I know how the attacks come, and so uh, we, we've got to pray. And uh, ask God to really settle in this place. We've been, some of you have been through it now. It's our 10th year. There's some turkey dinner Sundays. There's just an incredible spirit and, and people respond. And then other times, boy, I tell you what, you just really feel the, the pushback. And uh, we, we want that, uh, we want the presence of God to be in this place. And so that, that comes through prayer. And so we want to bombard the throne of grace. And we want to ask God to especially meet with us uh, on the Lord's day. Okay, let's go to prayer this evening. I'm going to have a veteran come and pray for us, Brother Yoder. I want him to come and lead us in our prayer this evening. And uh, again, we thank these men who served uh, for us and served our country. And now they serve in the Lord's army. Amen. And uh, appreciate them so much. Brother Yoder, lead us audibly. You pray along silently with him as he leads us aloud. Okay. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another opportunity to come to you in prayer this evening. Uh, Lord, we humbly bow before you, asking for your help. We're a needy people, and we know that you have everything that we need. But Lord, we lift a couple, up, a couple of things up to you this evening specifically. We think about uh, our big turkey day that we're going to have on Sunday. And Lord, we know that that outcome will be determined by you. Lord, we're willing to put in the work, and we'd ask that you'd help us. We'd ask as those flyers go out that they would get into the right hands, that they would get into the people that uh, have uh, something that they're looking for. And, Lord, we're asking that this Sunday that you would be their answer. I pray, Lord, that you would help us in our preparations, that we would not uh, lack in anywhere, and that things that are coming short you would bring to our preacher's attention so that we may get them taken care of. We thank you for the people and their willing spirit, and we'd ask that you'd help them this uh, week, uh, particularly this weekend, as the devil puts up many uh, fights against right. And Lord, we're not ignorant of his devices, but Lord, we're going to need uh, you to bring these things to our remembrance that we're in a battle, and so we'd ask for your help. Lord, we do thank you for our uh, military men that are on the field right now, we'd ask that you'd protect them and keep them safe, particularly those guys from out of this church. Uh, Lord, we love them, and, and we'd ask for your protection. But Lord, more than anything, we'd ask that you'd draw them close to you. We pray that they'd be the kind of testimony that they need to be for Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, we thank you for those that have served. We thank you for those that have given their lives to make this country what it is. And, Lord, we'd ask that you'd keep your hand on this country. Uh, you've uh, told us many things in the, in the Word of God, and we know that we cannot get away with wrong all the time. But we're asking that you'd be patient with us and give us more time to get back to you. Lord, we thank you for good churches like this one right here that love you with all their heart and want to serve you and want to reach the community for the cause of Christ. And we pray that you'd help us. Lord, we thank you for... Uh, Sarah Cato and the good report that we've got from her uh, down in Brazil. We pray that you'd protect her and her, her family down there and I pray that they would have a, uh, an outreach that extends even beyond what they can imagine. Lord, please use them in a great way. Lord, as we come to you uh, thinking of the, the uh, RU program and the people that have been reached through that, I pray that you would continue God, it's just an amazing thing the way that you've been working and the salvations and the people that are interested in actually fulfilling and doing the program. I pray that you'd bless them. I pray that you'd bless the workers, help them, empower them. I pray that they'd be prepared and filled with the Spirit as they bring the messages and the instruction to these men. Please continue with that. And Lord, again, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight once again to hear from the Word of God. We love you. Please speak to our hearts. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
506 in your hymnal, 506, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine. Let's all stand together as we sing 506 on that first, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I and my Savior I'm happy and blessed. Let's sing that last together. When we get to the chorus, make sure and watch me. We're going to slow that down and sing that chorus with our whole heart. All right, on that last perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking upon. Lost 
trust in his love. Lift it up now. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior. Amen. Good singing. You can be seated. Great job tonight. Been a good response from uh, folks. We've got uh, salad for probably 400 from the Texas Roadhouse. We have Texas Roadhouse rolls coming. Uh, actually, we ended up with two different roadhouses, both wanting to give us 400 rolls. So uh, we did not we did not turn them down. All right. Uh, so you might be going home with some rolls on Sunday, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, you can handle that. And uh, boy, the pies have come in, and uh, it's just uh, just been wonderful response from uh, folks in the, in the community, and uh, it's it's exciting to see, brother. Taylor and I went and picked up the turkeys today at two different Walmarts, and you'd be amazed what what people look at when you're pushing out a cart of 15 turkeys, you know, and then uh, another 15 in another place. We had to get 30 all together with the 10 giveaways, and uh, uh, folks always wonder, what, what in the world are you doing with all those turkeys, you know? And uh, Don thought they were talking about me, but I, and, uh, I, we uh, had great opportunities to give out the... Uh, flyers and invite folks to come and uh it's it's uh, it's exciting looking forward to it now tonight most of you know that hayes woodard the the fellow who brings our tent up uh just does it on a love offering basis and in fact he he just doesn't do it to to do it he does it because we preach the gospel and try to get people saved and uh that's what he's all about and uh, so, you know, to, to rent a tent that's 40 by 60 like he has would be probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 1500 to $2,000 at least. It's expensive to rent a tent, and uh, especially one of that size. And so uh, he does it for just a love offering basis. We're going to take the offering tonight towards that. If you, if you don't have it, you're not prepared for that this evening, you can do so on Sunday as well. Just designate you know, whatever you want to give and just put tent on there and we'll make sure that, that goes towards what we're going to give Brother Hayes for the tent, okay? And, uh, but let's be generous to him. He's a, he's a good man and uh, comes up from, where's he come up from? Does anybody remember? Worston Court? Somewhere south, I know. It's, 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 a, it's a drive for him. But he comes up and uh, he's just a good old fella and uh, we appreciate him so much. Uh, that tent is invaluable to have and it'll come in comes in very handy for us because there's no way we could fit everybody in our fellowship hall <laughs> and uh, cook here as well. All right, so let's, uh, let's pray. We'll ask God's blessing on the love offering tonight. All right, Father, thank you for the privilege, Lord, that's ours to, to give. We thank you for Brother Woodard tonight, Lord, and uh, for his willingness and for uh, you bringing him in across our path so that we could uh, use the tent that you've given to him. And Lord, I pray that your blessing be upon him as he gives this and comes and sets it up and helps tear it down and hauls it back and forth uh, so we could preach the gospel and see folks saved. I pray your blessing be upon him. I pray your blessing be upon the day. And Lord, I pray we'll be generous to him and that you'll maybe meet a need with this offering that we'll give to him. And we'll thank you for it. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
What do you call that that you play there? A lap harp. Okay. And, uh, it's very nice. Thank you. Luke 14, please, in your Bible tonight. Luke chapter 14. Luke 14. Beginning at verse number 15, the Bible says, And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I've bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Father, I pray you'll add your blessing to the reading of the scripture here this evening. And Lord, as we once again come to open your word and study it together, that Holy Spirit of God, you'd be our master teacher. You would open our understanding and open our eyes that we could behold wondrous things out of your law. I pray, Lord, we glean the truths that you would want us to glean uh, from this parable that the Lord gave. Lord, the teaching that he wanted to get across and that it would minister to our hearts this evening and give us what we need during this time for our church and in our lives. And Lord, I'll thank you for what you'll do. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The the whole context here, if you back all the way up in chapter 14 to the very beginning of the chapter, the Bible's talk, Jesus is talking here, verse number three, he's answering to the lawyers and the Pharisees. And he deals with them about the Sabbath day and. Uh, what do we help somebody on the Sabbath day? And you were allowed to do acts of mercy on the Sabbath day. And, uh, and then he goes into verse 7 where he gives them a parable about those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief room saying unto them, and he talks about when you go to a wedding, don't you go in and assume you have the chiefest seat because someone's coming in more important than you and you're going to have to be made lower. It's better for you to go to the lower seat and be asked to come into a better seat than the other way around. He's trying to point out to them how proud they are. And, and they're, they're, they're too proud to enter into the kingdom of God. And they're too proud to receive him as the Messiah. That's the, the, the bigger picture of what he's trying to illustrate to them. Notice verse 11. Whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And then he says in verse 12, Then he said also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed. Blessed by who? Huh? You're blessed by God. He's saying, you're not, don't call in people that can recompense you. Call in people that can't do anything for you. Most, I, I've, not, I've not read any books yet on church growth that were titled, How to Reach the Poor, the Maimed, the Halt, and the Blind. And, and nobody publishes a book like that. Why? Those people can't help your church. Yeah, but God will bless you. God says you will be blessed if you go after those folks. And so... He says, and thou shalt be recompensed uh, at the resurrection of the just. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said, blessed is he 
that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And Jesus then, then said he to them. So he's saying this in response to what that fellow said to him. He said, a man, certain man made a great supper and he bade many. Now the certain man here represents God. And, and the supper he makes represents salvation. So the, the, the certain man here represents who? God. Okay, three of us said that. The certain man here represents who? God. And the supper represents salvation. All right? Supper represents salvation. If you don't answer, we're going to be here a long time tonight, okay? So it's going to represent salvation. Now, he, he sends his servant out at supper time to say unto them that were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. So the servant's job is simply to bring others in. Now, you have to understand the nature of the, the, the supper, nature of the uh, wedding feast, as this is portrayed, is that invitations were sent out and you would RSVP that you're coming, though you would not know when it was. So you would just say, yes, I'll come, yes, I'll be there, and then they would send out the word, when, whatever day it was, whatever time it was, that okay, all things are ready, we're ready for the dinner tonight. And then you would drop whatever you're doing and go. Why? Because you said you would. You RSVP'd. You, you already said you'd be there. That's why it says, notice, that he, that he, he sent, the, the servant says, he, he'd say to them that were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. And that's why, uh, you will talk about it a little bit in a little bit, they, they begin to make excuses. Because they'd already accepted the invitation and now they're not coming. Okay? But you notice, the other thing I want you to, to notice here is that he made a great supper and he bade many. He bade many. I looked that word many up, and it's interesting. It, it, it means a, a multitude, a great multitude. And, and certainly a great multitude have been invited. Don't, hey, don't limit God's invitation. How often do we look at somebody, and if, if they have certain garb on or certain attire on, we think, well, they got a religion, they wouldn't be interested in coming. Huh? Oh, then we're limiting God's invitation. Or we see somebody who's maybe tatted up and has, you know, things coming up and we, uh, uh, they're not going to be interested. Well, don't limit God's invitation. God, God, wants, God wants them to come. And salvation is for all. Salvation's ready. So the servant goes out to bid them which are coming to, to say, come for all things are now ready. Come for all things are now ready. Hey, did you know salvation's ready? Did you know the Savior's ready? Uh, that, that eternal life is ready, God's ready, forgiveness is ready, <laughs> everything's ready. It just needs somebody to accept. And the servant meets with excuses. The master is angry at those who made excuses. And he says, okay, go back out to the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And he comes back and he says, hey, I did what you commanded me, but there's still room. And so he says, okay, go back out into the highways and the hedges and he says, compel them to come in. Compel them to come in. Compel means to drive our urge with force. It's, it's, it's to be irresistible, to constrain, to oblige, to necessitate. So it's either by physical or moral force. So what the word compel is meaning. It really means don't take no for an answer. Compel them to come in. What's the goal? Verse 23. The last six words of verse 23. That my house may be filled. God, God likes a full house. And He's not playing poker. Okay? God likes it when His house is full. It's a full house. God likes it when it's filled. But we have to be the part of the servant. Now, let's look at some lessons we learned from this, all right? The lessons we learn from this parable for us, okay? The main thing, number one, the main thing is to go. The main thing is to go. Hold your finger there in Mark or in Luke 14 and turn back to Psalms. Would you the book of Psalms? And particularly look at Psalm 126. Psalm 126.
Notice verse number 5 and 6. Verse number 5, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You, you weep, you bear precious seed, and you'll doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing your sheaves with him. But before you can weep, before you can give the seed, before you can come back rejoicing, you have to go. He that goeth, you have to be willing to go. That Jesus said in Mark 16 and verse 15, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What's the first word? Go. You have to be willing to go. Uh, it was said of the disciples that these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. They turned the world upside down and there are only 12 of them. We have more than 12. I haven't counted recently, but as of Sunday or so last week, I think there were 48 different people that had, that had been involved passing out flyers. Oh, that's more than 12. Maybe not with common core math, but it is in the old school math. And if they could, and if, if 12 men could turn their world upside down, what could 50 people do? What could 100 people do? But we have to be willing to go. You're not going to turn, not going to turn the world upside down from inside the church building. We're not going to turn the world upside down from a political office. We're, not going to, we're going to turn the world upside down by taking the gospel to sinners. By taking the word of God to the lost. And we do that personally and we do it persistently and we do it by, by taking the gospel to every creature and giving the, taking the opportunities that God gives us. We can, we can do that. And listen, don't... Those of you who are of, of the generation of social media, I've listened to a fellow this week, and, and he says, you know, and, 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 and I'm, not, I'm not saying I agree with everything he says, but, it, but I think he's on to something. He was talking about, uh, he is, I'm not sure what different social media he uses to give the gospel, but he had a message for atheists that was one of them. And he said that, video he made called A Message to Atheists has had received 100 million views. And he said, you know, I could never stand in my pulpit inside my church building and expect to reach 100 million people. That's, a, that's the day in which we live. That we have those, that, those outlets available to us. To reach the world. I haven't recently seen, uh, when we first started doing the website and such, we used to get a report. I don't know what happened to it. We used to get a report of different countries that had logged in and looked at our website. And I was always astounded at the number of, of looks we had from China. And, and places, I mean, countries that are close to the gospel. And, and, and people through the through the the. the uh, internet, being able to tune in and, and listen to the gospel and, and, and read the plan of salvation or listen to sermons. It's, it's an amazing opportunity. Don't, don't miss. You'll see the, we'll have folks here and we've already had folks call in because we put the ads on Craigslist for the turkey dinner Sunday. And folks, there are folks who look on there for, for community events that are free that their family can come to. And so they look and they see that and they, they call and say, yeah, we're coming. That, that, you know, we, we don't want to miss the opportunities that are available to us. But, but listen, don't, 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 don't just do that and not talk to people personally. 80, 85% of people who are in church are there because somebody personally invited them. Somebody personally invited them. You think about why you're in church. And it probably, and, and most times, by the way, it wasn't a stranger. It was somebody they knew who invited them to come. And so, uh, main thing is go. Go with the gospel. First two letters of the gospel are G-O. <laughs> go. All right? So the main thing is to go. The second thing that we notice from this story that Jesus told in Luke 14 is we're not to let anything stop you. Do not let anything stop you. 
The servant goes out. Listen, hey, this should be an easy job. You know why? They've already said they're coming. They RSVP'd. Yeah, I'll be there. And so he goes out to the first guy and says, okay, hey, uh, everything's ready. It's time to come. And the fellow makes an excuse. An excuse. And by the way, when someone says, have me excused, you know, when you use that word excuse there, you know what it means? It means free me from fault or blame. Whenever you were absent in school, you had to bring in excuse so you would be freed from blame. Okay? Freed from, from fault. Okay? And that's what they were asking because they already said they were coming. And now this guy makes an excuse and he says, I, I bought a piece of ground, I have to see it. I pray thee, I ask thee, I beg you, have me excused. Remove me from blame. They have to go look at ground. Now, we know who buys ground without looking at it. You don't buy a piece of ground to you, you go over every inch of it. And you know it's there. The same thing's true with the second fellow who said, I've got five yoke of oxen and I'm going to prove them, so I need you to pardon me from the blame. Get me excused. Again, it's like, uh, do, you, do you go buy a vehicle without ever looking at it? Without ever driving it? Without ever testing it? No, you, you check it out thoroughly and you would do the same with oxen. You see? And so that's an excuse. You know, what's interesting is the third guy said, I married a wife. He didn't even ask to be excused. Did you notice that? He just said, I married a wife. I can't come. <laughs> he didn't even say, please have me excused. <laughs> he just said, I ain't coming, all right? And, and thought that would be a good excuse. Maybe, maybe his wife said, we're not going. I don't know. But, you know, but the whole thing, hey, the, the overall picture is this. As you go, you're going to meet people with excuses. How many of you can testify, you know, that's true? Absolutely. They have all kinds of excuses why they can't make it. Why they can't come and why they won't get saved or why they won't listen to you or why they don't have time. for the, Can I just take a few minutes and show you how you can know for sure when you die you'll go to heaven? Oh, no, I don't have time. I don't have time. Or I got this going on or I got that going on. Or, or, or other than that, listen, not only will the sinner make an excuse, but other Christians sometimes give you excuses. Well, just going door to door, that doesn't work anymore. Or just uh, running a bus route, that, that doesn't work anymore. Soul winning just isn't for today. And, and you just you can't preach to people anymore. Well, we've heard that one. You just can't, people won't let you preach to them. And, and the Lord, listen, when they made excuses and they wouldn't come in, you know what the Lord said? Okay, go back out and get the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. Go out and get them. If the upper crust won't come, go get the lower crust. Okay? And see if they'll come. Uh, just keep going there was the excuses were no reason to stop getting the door slammed in your face no reason to stop see uh, cold windy rainy no reason to stop you just you just keep on going don't listen if i don't want if we don't want them to make excuses why are we making excuses you would I could, I could make a list sometimes of excuses I, I hear from people who can't get flyers out. That'll be a sermon someday, huh? Hey, let's, not, let's not us make excuses. All right? In fact, hold your finger there. Let's, we'll come back to 14. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Paul, writing to the church here at Corinth. Notice verse number 5 with me, will you? Notice he says, For when we were come into Macedonia. Now wait a minute. When did Paul go into Macedonia? You remember? He was waiting and he wanted to go into Asia and the Spirit said no. And so he waited. And then he had a vision. And there was a man over from Macedonia saying, Come over and help us. Okay, And so, man, we said immediately, you read about it in Acts, he says immediately, man, we set sail, we were on our way, knowing assuredly the Lord had called us to go there. Now look what he says. We, we come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. 
Did you know that you can be doing exactly what God wants you to do and it not be very comfortable? Your flesh won't like it. Flesh is used to being in control. And when you take that control away and you obey what God wants you to do, that's not real comfortable. And your flesh won't like it. So our flesh had no rest. What we were troubled on every side. How would we have trouble? Notice what he says. Without were what church? Fightings. Within were fears. Paul said, I'll be honest with you. It was rough on the outside, but we were having a hard time on the inside too. We were fearful. And, and, but let me ask you a question. Did he stop? No, he didn't. He kept on going. It was, it was in Macedonia, in Philippi, where, where they... All right. It was in Philippi where they got put in the prison. And at midnight they sang and prayed and the earthquake came and the jailer and his family got saved. That was Philippi. They got, but remember, they were in prison and before they got put in prison, they were beaten. Remember what the jailer did when he got saved? He washed their stripes. He tried to help them out a little bit. And then he got baptized, he and all his straight way. But they didn't stop. They didn't quit. They, I, I don't know. Some, sometimes I just wonder how, how we were, when, when Paul begins to talk to us or some of these believers talk to us, some of the, some of the, the ones that, that came even when you read about in a Fox's Book of Martyrs or something and the people that stood for Christ and even some of our modern day martyrs that are getting killed in this world that, that, that don't make our news. They don't tell us about them. How, how we won't but hang our heads when we meet them in heaven for what they did for Christ and how little it takes for us to stop doing something for Christ. So don't stop. Don't let anything stop you. Without, without we're fightings, within we're fears. Let me give you the third lesson from Luke 14. The third lesson is if you really want to win souls, you can. If you really want to win people to Christ, you can. It is not a matter of having a burden. It is a matter of obeying Christ's command. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so we go to preach the gospel. Now, now to help us to, to do that and to obey that command, we ought to want to do it because Jesus said so. And He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so we ought to do it, not because I'm comfortable doing it, not because this is what I love to do, not because it's easy to do, not because it's convenient to do, but because Jesus said to do it. So we know here's some incentives to win souls to Christ. Number one, it makes me obedient. Said, uh, in fact, in John 16, you're in Luke 14, look at John 16. Would you turn there with me, please? John 16. Are you okay? You all right? John 16. I want John 15, verse 16. Would you look that? Right, it's probably close by there. John 15, verse 16. Notice what the Lord said. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Boy, the Calvinists like that verse right there, don't they? But you know the unfortunate thing for them? The verse doesn't stop there. What has He chosen us and what has He ordained us to do? That ye should go. Well, there's that word again, go. That we should go and what? Bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, He may give it you. These things I command you. Okay? These things I command you. So He's chosen us, He's ordained that we would go and bring forth fruit. Now if that's His command and that's what He's ordained and that's what He said I'm to do, if I do not do that, I'm disobedient. Boy, that's quiet. And a holy hush fell over the congregation. There's no other choice. It's either obedience or disobedience. So we need to be obedient. 
So I, and my incentive is I want to be obedient. The second thing is, so I can be a follower of Jesus. Matthew 4.19, Jesus said, You follow me and I will make you to be a fisher of men. I'll make you to be fishers of men. So if I'm going to follow Jesus, He's going to make me to be a fisher of men. They begin to follow Jesus. Andrew began to follow Jesus. And what did Andrew do? John chapter 1, Andrew went and found his brother, Simon Peter. And he brought him to Jesus. In fact, Andrew's only mentioned three times in the New Testament, and each time he's bringing somebody to Jesus. Andrew was a great soul winner. And so he's always bringing someone to Christ. And, 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 and the early disciples, they, they understood that by following Jesus, we have to win men and women to Christ. Later in that same chapter, Philip brought Nathaniel. If you're serious about following Jesus, you'll be serious about winning other people to Christ. If you're serious about following Jesus, you'll be serious about giving the gospel to other people will not be content to see them die and go to hell. Makes me obedient. I can be a follower of Jesus. The third one is the fact of hell. Look at Luke 16. You're in Luke 14 for our story this evening, but look at Luke 16. Sometimes people say, you know, Pastor, if, if somebody would just die and go to hell and then talk to me about it, then I'd believe it. Well, we had somebody do that. And it was recorded for us in the Bible. Here a rich man died and he ended up in hell. And there's a conversation that takes place between Abraham and this man. And he says in verse 27, here's the request of the man in hell. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. You know the, 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 the prayer, that's the prayer of people in hell. It's not to get out. It's not to, to he found out that I can't get any comfort. He found out that I can't go from here to that, I, I'm here. So here's my prayer. Here's the prayer of people in hell tonight. Go to my father's house. Go to my brother's house. Go to my sister's house. Oh, please go tell my family how to be saved so they won't come to this place of torment. I've read that verse to people who say, all oh, my friends will be in hell. And I, and I say to them, they don't want you there. And that proves it. They do not want you to go there. That was an awful place. Eternal fire. Eternal torment, eternal agony, eternal pain, eternal wailing, eternal weeping forever and ever and ever and ever. The call from hell is a call for soul winners. Go tell somebody, hey, we don't know. You don't know who you're giving that, that, that flyer to. You don't know that that somebody in hell has been crying out for that person to get saved. Brother Brett had the opportunity to do a funeral today. Family on the bus route had a, um, I think it was an uncle of theirs, young, a young man and heroin overdose. Been, been clean for a while, went out, relapsed, and boom, he took his life. And being the, by the way, that's what a bus captain is. He's a, he's a pastor of the bus route. They asked him to do the funeral. He was there for the viewing last night. He did the funeral today. Got a phone call a little bit ago. Fellow's probably watching this evening, Sydney. Uh, Kay talked to him on the phone, told him about watching live stream this evening, wants to come to church, wants to get his life straightened out with God. See? And uh, Brett did a tremendous job. And uh, there's just, just, listen, opportunities. Opportunities. They're everywhere. Wood, whether, uh, the director of the Woodward Funeral Home, Woodyard, there on South High Street, said they average three to four every month funerals of drug overdose. 
three to four every month, just at that one funeral home. It's, a, it's an epidemic in Ohio, epidemic in our country. It really is. Listen, they, they need the gospel. If the Son will make you free, you'll be free indeed. You need Jesus Christ. So the fact of hell, I can be a follower of Jesus. It makes me obedient to him. D is the blood of the lost is on our hands. The blood of the lost is on our hands. Uh, back in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 3. Going back to the Old Testament. Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 17. Ezekiel 3 verse 17. The Bible says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. God says, it's pretty plain, isn't it? He has, hey, he has pronounced the wages of sin is death. He's given the, the pronouncement, he's given the, the edict that the soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. And our job is, to warn the wicked. To warn the unsaved. That they'll die and die. That, that death is separation. And that separation separation from God forever in a place called hell. But the good news is God loves you and sent His Son to die for you. And He died in your place. He died for your sin. And God says if we give... The, listen, He didn't say they have to accept Christ. He said we have to tell them of Christ. And if we tell them of Christ, even if they reject it, we've washed our hands. Our hands, their blood. You say, Pastor, what's that mean? Their blood will I require at your hands. I don't know what it means, and I don't want to know what it means. I don't want to find out what that means. I, I, I don't think it's good. Agree? It's not something we, we want to be accountable for with the blood dripping off my hands because I never told someone how they'd go to heaven. I didn't warn them of what was ahead. If we, don't, if we don't tell them, who's going to? If we don't compel them to come in, who's going to compel them to come in? If we don't bring them in, who's going to bring them in? Ask yourself, when's the last time I compelled someone to come? When was the last time I compelled someone to come to Christ? The blood of the lost can be in our hands. E, the next incentive to win people to Christ and to obey the command of the Lord is it brings joy to heaven. It brings joy to heaven. In Luke 15, right after Luke 14, where the Lord gives the parable of the sheep and then the coin and then the son, Notice in verse number 7, after the sheep is found, it says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons that need no repentance. And again, when the woman finds the coin, verse 10, likewise I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Angels and saints in heaven rejoicing. When someone puts their faith in Jesus Christ. All heaven rejoices, the choir sings, that that's the value of one. All heaven rejoices when one person receives Christ as their Savior. Wouldn't you like to put a smile on the face of God? You know why God will, God will bless the dinner day and He's blessed it through the years because the gospel's good. And God loves it when people hear about Jesus Christ. He loves it when, he hear, when people hear about His Son. 
Peter Apples served on the, during the Confederate Army during the Civil War. And as the story is told, he went into enemy territory. Now, Peter Apples didn't know much about being a good soldier. He just knew that when they said charge, he was supposed to go. And one day, the officer gave the command to charge. But almost simultaneously, after he gave that command to charge, they came under severe fire, and the command to retreat was given. But Peter Apples did not hear it, and he kept on going. He went across what was called no man's land and into enemy territory. He found a trench that had an enemy soldier in it. He hit him two or three times, then grabbed him by the neck and drug him up out of the trench and slung him over his shoulder and started back for his side. The enemy would go to shoot, but it was their man draped over his shoulder and they were fearful of hitting him and so they didn't shoot. And Peter Apples carried him all the way across no man's land, back into his own territory. Went up to his commanding officer and dropped the enemy soldier at his feet. The commanding officer looked at him and said, where did you get him? Peter Apples says, I got him over yonder in a ditch. There's plenty of them over there. Y'all could have one if you wanted one. There's the truth is, it's 295,000 people within 10 minutes of Bible Baptist Church. There's plenty of people. I think we all could have one if we wanted one. I think we all could have one if we wanted one. Will you ask God to give you one? Will you ask God between now and Sunday to give you one that you can bring here and that you can bring down the aisle? When the invitation is given and say this one accepted Christ their Savior on Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday morning, that's another reason to come early. Maybe a visitor here and you'd witness to him and lead him to Christ before church ever starts. Then you could bring him forward and we'll talk to him about getting baptized and being obedient to the Lord. But will we ask God to give us one? Now it's, now it's time to get personal and say, Let's, Lord, give me one for Sunday that we can have here and bring them down. Let's, let's really want one. Y'all could have one if you really wanted one. Let's bring them in. Let's compel them to come in. May God help us to live the lessons that Jesus taught from this parable. Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we bow before you now this evening. Jesus, thank you for this parable you gave. I understand what you were teaching these Pharisees as they listened. And understand they, they couldn't believe that poor, maimed, halt, and blind people would come in. You were teaching them about humility, but I think, Lord, that you're teaching us something a little different. We're those servants, and we're going out to tell folks to come in. Lord, I'm asking you to help us not to limit your invitation. Help us to go after everybody. Touch the hearts of people, Lord, and help us to, don't let anything stop us, God. We want to be obedient to you. We want to follow your command. We want to follow you and be fishers of men. We're asking you to Help us to win one between now and the Lord's day. We can bring with us, rejoicing, bringing our sheaves with us. And I pray many folks here this evening, Lord, would ask you for that. And ask you to help us to do it. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying here in just a minute. I just wonder how many tonight would say, Preacher, I'm going to ask God for one between now and Sunday. If I can get one that I'll bring in that I've led to Christ, bring him forward on Sunday morning when the invitation's given. Pastor, pray for me this evening. I'm going to ask God to do that for me. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.
Amen. Numbers of people. That's great. God bless you. You may put them down. Father, you've seen the hands here this evening. And Lord, we know that we can't do it without your help. For without you, we can do nothing. And so, Father, lead us across the path of those who are ready to hear. And Lord, help us not miss the opportunities that you give us. Lord, help us not to limit your invitation, but speak the word to everybody. Lord, I'm praying that you'll hear our prayer tonight and you'll answer it. Make us aware and make us sensitive and make us aware of our dependence upon the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, you'll give us a great harvest of souls over these next several days as we prepare for the Lord's Day on Sunday and our special day. Thank you, Lord, for the labor of the people. Lord, I thought about that as we sang that song tonight. Let us labor for the Master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all His wondrous love and care. When all of life is over and our work on earth is done, we'll be there on the roll call of heaven. We'll talk about days like we're looking at now. Lord, use us, please. Use us for your glory and for your honor. Dismiss us now with your care, Lord. Make us mindful you go with us. Help us to be busy about the Father's business now this week. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And let's sing. What are we going to sing? Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Got that? All right, let's hear you sing. Ready? Uh, isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Two things, flyers are in the room. Uh, I think there's some uh, donuts and cookies down there too that Terry brought in in honor of the veterans, so help yourself to those. And then if you... Making a turkey, uh, the pans and the turkeys are in the fellowship hall. The sheet is on the table. Just take two small pans, one big pan to cook it in if you need it. Uh, the turkeys are in the, the tall freezer. And um, there's a freezer that's marked, don't touch these, don't touch those, okay? Uh, the other turkeys are what you want. And uh, sign them out and you're good to go, okay? God bless you. See you Saturday morning.